you have to do it. Yeah. All right, who else do we got in the house? We got uh, Mr. Lopez. Mm -hmm. How are you? Amir, is, it, is it Amari Lopez? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, how are you? Oh, uh, okay. All how right, where are you from? from? What city are you from? Like, where am I from or where am I at right now? What, yeah, what city are you from? I'm from New Jersey. Like, I'm from New Jersey. Okay, I mean, what town? Oh, uh, right now? Yes. Sarasota. You said, uh, say, say that one more time? Sarasota. Sarasota. Okay, got you, man. And how'd you hear about our program today? Uh, my mom. Great. Is mom there with you? No. Tell her we said what's up, man. What you, what you doing for Mother's Day? I'm going to make her something special. That's what's up, man. I'm going to make my wife some pancakes that morning. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So who else we got? We got um, David Powell. Hey, David. How you doing, brother? Uh, I'm doing good. Where you from, man? Uh, from New Jersey. Okay. What what city are you from? Patterson. Say that one more time. Uh, Patterson. From Patterson. Okay, great, man. We got a lot of brothers from Patterson in the house today. How did you hear about our program today? I've been here before for the, uh, it was uh, about the pilot. Okay. Did you participate in our video game uh, tournament? I didn't know you had one. No. Okay, cool. Hey, so we have a video game. Um, if you're interested in becoming a gamer, uh, I'm going to put the link to uh, that in the chat because uh, we have some uh, information on that as well. So hopefully we can get you guys uh, started so you can start making your gaming business. Is that all right? Okay. Great, man. Thanks for coming, brother. Sean, how you doing? S-H-A-W-N? All right, I'll come back to Sean. All right, who else we got? All right. Uh, Okafor? Good morning. Hey, how are you? Good. And what city are you from? Orange. You from Orange? Oh, great. We got the superintendent yeah. in the house. You want to say hello to the superintendent? Hello. And what school do you go to, Prince? Good morning. Good morning. Orange High School. You go to Orange High School. Okay, great. So you're going to be one of the kids that get um, the um, uh, community service. So great, yeah. great, great, great. All right. Uh, we're going to be getting started. Uh, it's 10, it's 11.04. We're going to get a started at 11.05. Uh, maybe give it 11.07 um, just to give, because we had 60 people uh, that were registered. And so we're just really kind of doing a check-in to see how everybody's doing. I see Mr. Lane up there with his son. How you guys doing? You guys are on mute. Still can't hear you. Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. You're doing fine? Now you're in the East Orange Explorer program, correct? Yes. You wanna say what's up to the to the mayor, Mayor, mayor Green? Hello. What's up, Jerome and Joseph, how y'all doing? I'm doing fine. All right, it's good seeing both of you, man. We happy to have you. All right, great. Who Thank didn't you. I call on? Um, you can help me out if you can, Barry. Uh, that, uh, let's see. Uh, C-E-L, uh, Selena? Are you there, Selena? Yeah. Hey, how are you and, and where are you from? I'm good, I'm from Haiti. You're from Haiti? Oh, thank you for coming. And, and what city do you live in now? New Jersey. Great, great, great. What, and what school do you go to? Orange High School. The Orange High School. Okay, great. Well, thank you for coming. We got Orange in the house. Uh, the superintendent is here. He definitely want to say what's up. Mr. Devone, uh, we got in the house. All right, let's see who else is coming in. We got Edwin. Did I say that? No, that's Edith. Edith. How you doing, Edith? All right, no Edith right now. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so, 
vision concerns here. We talked to, talk to Vincent. Uh, we got Yasir. Hey, Yasir. How you doing? All right. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would like, we always try to get started on time uh, because we never um, take anybody's time for granted. We want to thank everyone uh, for coming out today. Uh, there are some turbulent times in our country uh, right now, and uh, we are the ones that are going to turn it around. Uh, and so uh, this session is part of our careers uh, exploration session. Uh, and so we've been exploring various careers. Uh, last week, we uh, explored the aviation career. We had a 17-year-old boy uh, who is an air pilot. He actually got his air pilots before he was able to drive a car. Uh, hmm. And uh, we're going to be paying for any young person who wants to join the Black Pilots Association. We're going to be paying for you to join that organization if you're interested in learning how to fly. Um, this week, we are focusing on uh, careers in law enforcement. And we believe that uh, law enforcement is a phenomenal career path. And we wanted to uh, provide an opportunity for you to talk to leaders in the area to focus on how do you get involved in that area. We also have opportunities for you to ask any question uh, that you uh, feel uh, that you would like an answer to uh, at this time. And adults, this session is really all about the young people. And so we want to keep our comments are uh, extremely um, uh, targeted uh, to uh, specific questions that are answered. And we wanna give the young people opportunities to uh, have those conversations. And so I'd like to introduce uh, the president of our organization in our fraternity, we call him the Bossilus. Uh, our organization is the Ada Pi chapter of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And his name is Mr. Barry Devon. Um, thank you, Brother Stevens, for the introduction. Um, on behalf of the brothers of the Ada Pi chapter, I want to say thank you for joining us today, um, as well as to the um, Cleo Clicks uh, mentoring um, program. Thank you for your uh, continued support of Ada Pi um, initiatives. Um, without you, um, we wouldn't be able to deliver such great programming um, on, a, on a consistent basis as, as, as we do. Um, Today, we are joined by a distinguished group of panelists who, uh, who are going to provide some insight to some of the building blocks um, to um, our youth participants today that will help them prepare for a career in law enforcement and, and perhaps in life. We, we're looking to get some of them golden nuggets that you can use uh, from today and throughout your, your careers. Um, the panelists includes a diverse mix uh, professionals uh, ranging from um, a local government leader, including the Honorable East Orange Mayor um, Ted Green, um, the um, president of the New Jersey chapter of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, or Noble, that is um, Brother um, Giles. Yep. Um, we also have joining us today the Superintendent of Orange Public Schools, Dr. Gerald Fitz II. And from the East Orange Police Department, we have Captain Larry Martin and Lieutenant Marilyn Barrett. And um, the moderator for today's program is distinguished author and social um, activist, um, David Miller. But before we get started, um, we have the pleasure of having a representative from the second district of Omega South Fire Fraternity Incorporated, Corridor 4. Um, this um, gentleman is responsible for leading the direction um, or helping to shape the direction and, and, and um, all of the great programming that, um, that's done here in the state of New Jersey. Um, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce um, Brother Corridor Rep, Leon Smith, who will provide us with some words of welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Bossless. And so uh, again, my name is Leon Smith and I have the honor and privilege of serving uh, as the corridor representative for the great state of New Jersey. And so to our esteemed uh, panelists, to our mentees and family and friends and to my beloved brothers of Omega Psi Fire Fraternity Incorporated, I bring you greetings on behalf of the 24 uh, active 20 uh, undergraduate and graduate chapters here 
uh, in the state of New Jersey. Um, before I go any further, I just want to take a moment to publicly acknowledge and congratulate the mighty Ada Pi chapter for being our quarter four uh, graduate chapter of the month for the month of March. And I also want to just particularly point out uh, Brother Matt Stevens for being our graduate brother of the month, uh, as well as Brother Robert McAllister for being our 50 plus uh, brother uh, of the month. Ada Pi chapter is an outstanding chapter, and uh, I just want to re make, make sure I give those remarks. You brothers can continue to lead our state in such a demonstrative manner. Uh, we just appreciate you and your efforts. And today's discussion is just one more example of the great work that you continue to do uh, in our community. I'm excited in particular for today's discussion. As you all know, uh, in our society, we continue as people of color to face uh, systematic uh, racism. But the one thing I love about the Brothers of Ada Pi chapter, we don't just sit back and diagnose problems. We, we, are try, we actually try to come up with solutions for problems. And we all know that one of the ways that we can do this is actually to uh, expose our youth to the various career paths within law enforcement to actually add to her ranks, right? So the more that we diversify uh, the various law enforcement uh, agencies, the more opportunity that we can actually, actually be, a be a part of the solution. And so I wanna again, prematurely, and in advance, thank all of the panelists for their great contributions they're going to make uh, today uh, with regard to uh, today's discussion. And law enforcement in general is a great uh, career path uh, in general. So I'm looking forward to being a fly on the wall uh, and hearing all of the great uh, discussions. And again, to the parents that are on the call, uh, thank you. And I heard quite a few of the young people who said that their mothers led them to uh, today's uh, environment, to the, today's discussion. And so I want to thank them. Uh, for their um, raising these strong uh, uh, future leaders and, and giving them and putting them in the right position that can actually potentially ch change their lives and change our world. Thank you so much. And with that said, I yield back to you, uh, Brother Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Brother Stevens, before we move on, I just want to acknowledge Brother Donna Williams, who is the um, chair for the second district, district, district's um, fatherhood and mentoring program, really providing leadership regarding those initiatives throughout the state as well as throughout the country. So thank you, um, Brother Williams, for joining us today. Great. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Brother uh, Basilis. Uh, we all, always want to start out giving our sponsor uh, an opportunity to uh, welcome us, uh, as well as to say a bit about uh, the organization. So today, our representative uh, who we report to is Linda Savales. Um, <coughs> Linda, if you're available, would you like to give uh, greetings? Okay, Linda must have stepped away for a second. Um, in that regard, uh, what I'll have uh, is... Um, the, the person who actually got us uh, involved in clicks has been a lifelong friend of mine. Uh, he called one day and said, uh, hey, Matt, listen, I know you guys are doing a lot of work in Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Um, I have a great opportunity that I'm working with. I'd like to uh, expose you to that opportunity. And he introduced us to the clicks organization. Uh, this brother has uh, done phenomenal work throughout the country and actually throughout the world uh, in regards to youth um, and youth development. Uh, he actually has a, um, a video as well as a um, card that focuses on things to do when you're stopped by the police uh, to uh, engage young people in making smart decisions to get home safe. Uh, he also um, consults with police departments uh, throughout the world uh, to assist in community development. So with that said, our moderator for today uh, and the person who introduced us to clicks, I'd like to introduce Mr. David Miller as we get started. Good morning, you guys. Hope um, everyone is uh, doing well. Uh, shout out to the young people for thinking it not robbery to spend a Saturday having a super important conversation. Wanna, wanna thank Matt Stevens and his uh, fraternity Omega Psi Phi for always being bold and cutting edge, particularly when it comes to responding to the community issues that we have at hand. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and particularly to the young people, uh, we have a very distinguished uh, panel. 
And it could take us uh, four hours to read everybody's bio individually. So I know we don't have that much time, you know, this morning or, that, or, after, or afternoon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ask specific members of the panel questions. Keep in mind, panelists, we want to keep our remarks uh, pretty succinct. And for the young people, if you have any questions, if one of the panelists responds and you disagree, you can either raise your hand, you can drop your question in the, uh, in the chat box, which I will also be monitoring, or you can unmute uh, your line because our ultimate goal is to have young people, you know, really share what's on your hearts and minds, particularly as it relates to policing. And, and, and what I'll say both personally and professionally ladies and gentlemen, and to our young scholars in attendance, this is probably one of the most important conversations that we could have on a Saturday morning. Because I think one of the ways that we change what is currently happening as it relates to policing is we got to make sure that we can um, recruit and retain uh, more black and brown police officers. And so in order to change the system, you know, we need to, you know, find more people of color who can enter the system, who have the right mindset and who are getting the kind of training and then also support that they need from the community. And so with that being said, um, I'm going to jump to Captain Martin, Lieutenant Marilyn. Uh, I, I don't want to butcher your last name. Is it Barat? Barat. Barat. Barrett, okay. I thought I was close, but I was, okay. And then um, Mr. Uh, Giles Ship from Noble, I'll just ask you three um, the first question. Why is it important to recruit, um, train, and retain Black and Brown officers? Why, why is that even important? Why is that even a topic of conversation? Any particular order, or you, would you like me to start? Any, any one of you can start. Thank you. Okay, I, I think that um, that's a very important uh, concept that needs to be addressed um, for many of the reasons that you just stated. Um, where we are as a society and what we're facing, the challenges that we're facing in the policing profession, we uh, people of uh, black and brown descent need to be included amongst the ranks. Um, we best know um, what's needed to um, in, in our communities. Um, I think that we've been underrepresented uh, when you look at law enforcement, there's an underrepresentation of um, of our of, of our people, and that needs to be addressed so that we uh, are receiving the the quality service that we are required that we that we require in our communities. So um, the training, recruitment, and retention of Black and Brown peoples um, um, are is, is of the utmost importance, and. Um, I, 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 think, I thank God for a mayor such as uh, Mayor Green who allowed us to be here this morning, um, Dr. Fitzhugh, because it's, it just shows that we have hope and faith that um, we can work within the system to be the change um, that's much needed. Thank you. Thank you. Next, who's next? Um, Lieutenant Barrett, um, and to you know, piggyback off of Captain Martin, I feel that we definitely need to be a part of training and um, the recruitment within our community because we know what our children need, you know, and guidance and to show them. And I think that we're just, in order to for that to happen, to become better, we are the ones that have to, to, to do that, you know? Mm. Okay, Mr. Ship. Yeah, let me just say, um, uh, you know, the community are the police and the police are the community. Uh, that's one of the principles uh, Sir Robert Peel, who's known as the father of modern day policing. And until we get to that point, until the community reflects the true values and the culture of the community, we're going to continue to have these discussions, unfortunately. And as much as we can do to make sure that the community reflects that, that the police agencies reflects the communities that they serve. Uh, we're not gonna have the cultural competency to serve that community in the most efficient, effective way. And why is that so important? Because the community basically 
is the, the we pull from that community in order to one do our jobs in an effective way we need the community and the community needs the police we need the community because we can't put a police officer on every street we can't uh we, the community is the, are the people who we pull from to become jurors on specific trials. And they, we want them to turn to just verdict. And as well, those individuals that serve in that capacity, they have to be a collaborative part of what we're doing every day on a daily basis. If not, we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna continue to have the same problems that we're having now. We'll be here again, two years from now, with another George Floyd discussion. Mm -hmm. It's critically important that we have that community voice in everything that we do in policing. Mm -hmm. oh, I hear David, can, can I ask that you um, uh, ask a, a brother a ship to kind of give an indication of what Noble actually is? Yeah, really, really quickly, um, Mr. Ship, can you just share with the young people what Noble is? Yes, Noble is an acronym for the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executive. We're an organization of black law enforcement executives from federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Uh, we've been in existence since 1976. Uh, we're an international organization throughout the United States, the Caribbean, and the UK, and we're getting ready to start a chapter in Nigeria. Um, what we do is a couple of things real quickly. We uh, mentor people so they can become chiefs of police. We're an organization of chiefs, commanders, and executives in law enforcement. We mentor people so they can become chiefs of police, as well as we monitor legislation and policy that impacts all communities with a special emphasis on the African-American community. And in addition to that, we consider ourselves the bridge between the community and the police. So we go out to the community and we talk to them and educate them on issues around law enforcement. Uh, one of our uh, marquee programs is called The Law in Your Community in which we work with predominantly young people from the ages of 13 to 24. And we explain to them, um, like uh, you had mentioned earlier, what are some of the best ways to unfortunately survive a police encounter and get home and let your parents handle that matter. Uh, this way you can consult with us and we can tell you the better ways to do that versus okay. out there on the street, you're gonna lose. You're going to lose. That's the way the system is set up. You cannot hold court on the streets. You have to bring that matter to adults, get the proper legal representation, and address it in that manner. So that's just very, that's a nutshell version of what we do. And we are um, actually uh, chiefs and commissioners of about 48% of the uh, metropolitan police officers throughout the United States. Okay, okay. So re really quickly, you guys and I, and, and for the young people, begin to think about what kinds of questions you want to ask, because we have a dynamic panel of both officers and also elected officials and folks that are uh, seriously concerned about the community. One of the takeaways that I heard was that um, hiring from the community, that there is a interest of hiring uh, Black men, Black women, uh, such as the young people who will who are on the line who will be graduating from from high school that the police force is a viable profession some of you will go away to college and come back seeking employment that the police departments in your local community stand ready willing and able to hire you so let's shift gears really quickly and i want to go to dr fitzhugh and mayor green and I think this is a really, really important question. What advice would you give the young people that are participating today? What, what advice would you give them about um, thinking about or considering a career in law enforcement? And let's start with Mayor Green. Yes, and, and, and great question. Uh, let me just say thank you, first of all, um, for allowing me to be a part of this platform, especially with our young people. Uh, listen, we in the city of East Orange, I couldn't be no prouder uh, to be the mayor here because when we look at all the unrest that is going on throughout different countries and different cities, we are fortunate here in the city of East Orange because when you look at our, our men and women of our police department, actually it represents our community. 
Uh, we have some fine men and women who are, are, are native East Oranges, right? And we are made up a community of, of just so outstanding young men who graduated from high school, went into the academy and on our police force. Um, and, 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 and we always encouraging our young men. We have several programs. You know, the day I walked in the door as the mayor, we started our exposed program uh, uh, for our young people to uh, get exposed to what is police and what is public safety. Uh, we are working with, <laughs> with everyone, you know, in terms of nonprofit, for-profit organizations. You know, listen, we, we know our young people have seen a lot of things happening um, lately, but what we want to do is encourage our young people that there are good police officers. There are good men and women who wants to be on those uh, police force uh, and, and do well and, and make it a career out of it. And not only that, they want to be in a community that nurtures them, that raised them, and, and, and that they have grown to, to become productive individuals. So we, we are, again, um, as I said earlier, and don't want to be redundant, we are pushing programs every day through our PAL program, Explorers program. We have a number of kids there. I encourage young people, you know, regardless of what they're saying on on TV and what's happening. We need young people such as our young men and young ladies that's on today to become um, those outstanding and upright police officers. So as a mayor and the 14th mayor of the city of East Orange, um, um, I, I, I encourage our young people to learn all they can, um, surround themselves with good people such as, you know, uh, Captain Martin and, 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 and um, um, Lieutenant Bar Bar Barrett, who has been outstanding individuals in our community. So, uh, and again, I have to say this, we are fortunate when other cities, again, as I said, going through so many unrest, we haven't had those problems. We're a city that is 79% um, crime reduction. We have, we're a city that just haven't had those problems. We're not saying that we, we are perfect, but one thing we are saying that our police department reflects the people in our community and we're very grateful for that. So our, to our young people, whatever we have to do, if you're in these stores, we wanna encourage you to become great police officers and firefighters and law enforcement. It's a good career for you. It's a, it's a game changer because we need individuals to make sure that the things that happen to black and brown people that you come up and stand on the shoulders of us and don't let that happen and be that voice. And we're depending on you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Green. Dr. Fitzhugh, what advice would you give um, some of the young people that are participating this morning who may be considering a career in uh, law enforcement. Um, what, what wisdom would you share with them? First and foremost, I just want to thank each of you for an invitation to be part of this great group of panelists. I think it's important that our students and our outside community see folks that look like them, sound like them, a part of the conversation. One, more, one of the most important pieces, and I think about my youth, I actually grew up in East Orange in Dodtown, and I look at so my relationship with my former principal, Mr. Hamilton, and he came to Orange High School in January of 20, 2020. And I got on the microphone and I said, this was the superintendent's principal. And so they looked at not only myself, but they looked at this other African-American brother who was doing the correct thing for children. And so I think one of the most important pieces is that we have to ensure that our students are able to reinvest in their community, which means that we have to give them an optimal educational experience and provide them with the elective courses and the content level courses to align them to that kind of um, law enforcement work they would want to be a part of. At Orange High School, we have the ROTC, which I think is really great. Um, but I also think that some of the courses in terms of the reading and the writing and in terms of the, um, the historical perspective type courses are going to align them with their perspective in terms of working in law enforcement. I'll say this, um, at Orange High School, we have the, and also at Orange Preparatory Academy, we do have our R, um, ROs, SROs, I'm sorry, um, within our schools. They see those positive um, individuals within our school district. And then they also have relationships with them, which is allowing our students, no matter who they are, to have a look-see or a 
um, a partner that they can say, you know what, I want to be just like so and so. And so as we continue to look at our infrastructure in the school district, we have to make sure that we kind of promote um, law enforcement the correct way and kind of take those social ills out from what folks see on television. Mm, thank you, thank you. So let me let me jump to the young people, parents, um, mentors. Um, are there any questions that any of the young people, parents or mentors, and again, we're talking about uh, careers in law enforcement and we have a uh, really dynamic panel of current officers, both men and women, as well as uh, elected officials, and also folks that are really about um, enhancing community life. And so we really want to see if any of the young people or parents uh, or mentors who may be participating this morning have any questions. And again, if you don't want to unmute your mic, you can drop your question in the chat and we will um, get your question answered. And so uh, let, let, me, let me ask another question that I really think is important when we think about careers in law enforcement. And I would be remiss if, if we didn't at least think about things that have happened in this nation within the last couple of years. And this, this specifically will go out to um, Larry Martin, Marilyn Barrow, and J J uh, brother, brother Ship. Um, why should young people even trust the police given, given what they're seeing? I mean, we live in a 24 hour news cycle and young people are seeing and hearing things that are happening between police and community. I think that that's an important uh, conversation that we wanna have. And I'll ask all of our panelists to um, try to keep your remarks uh, to two minutes. And so let's start with, and any, any one of you can start. Well, well, um, I, I think that is a very important question that needs to be answered. Um, I think on a very personal level, um, starting with the, 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 the young people who uh, saw fit to be here this morning, you have to understand there's people who are volunteering their time. Uh, there are people who care about you. We are you. I sat in the same place as you said. I went to the same schools. I'm from the same community as you. So I'm vested in, um, in, in, in you all and in your future. Um, I, my success is, is succinctly tied to, to you all. So we want you to trust us. That's why I'm here this morning. Um, you know, there, we, we have to find a way to get rid of that disconnect where you see me as the police, but you don't see me as, you know, cause when I take off that uniform, my, I am you. So the social ills that you face, I face. My children are you. We are family, uh, although we have been taught not to look at each other like that, we are, and we have to see each other that way. That's why I need you to be a part of this career so that we are, that our voice is heard because we are, we are a, an extreme minority in law enforcement. So it's important that we recruit and that you join and we learn to trust each other and work together. That's, that's a very important question that needs to be addressed. We have to learn to trust each other. And I understand that that's part of my job to build that bond with you, with you all. That's why we're here today. I hope that you are come with some questions because we're here for you. Hmm. And, and if I, oh, I'm sorry. So I, okay. And if I can say, listen, uh, our young people, we are, we want to commend you uh, for getting on this call at 11 o'clock on a Saturday. And it just shows your commitment. It shows your parents' commitment um, to be a part of a platform with men and women who care about all of you. Um, as uh, Captain Martin said, when you look at police officers or firefighters or any public safety person, we are human beings, right? But we have a job to do. And, and, and our job sometimes is not easy, but we want y'all to know that you can be that person right where we at. And we're hoping that our influence, uh, especially today and, and, and in the future, that we can be a part of guiding you and, and, and supporting you and letting you know that, you know, you can do this. And, and be honest with you, we are dependent on all of you young people that are on the, the call, the Zoom today, 
Uh, we know that we cannot do this without you. We know that you have to be a part of what we do each and every day because you are the future. And if you didn't know it, we are going to be dependent on all of you. And I guess, you know, with, 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 with um, Matt Stevens and the bosses putting on this um, platform today is excellent. And I know as the mayor, anything that we can do to help you, guide you, um, support you, we want y'all to know that we sincere about it because somebody gave us an opportunity. I'm not where I'm at because I'm at where I'm at. Did I work hard? Yes, but there were so many men and women in my life, starting with my father and other mentors and other women, you know, starting with my mom who encouraged me. And we want to give y'all the same opportunities because some of these opportunities are just a little different, but we want to make sure that whatever tools that you need, whatever guidance that you need, that those men and women that you see every day out there serving the public, they can help you and they would help you. So you just have to call on us and you have to believe in us because we're not just sitting here today um, selling you guys dreams. We know for a fact that we have to make sure that y'all are able to stand on our shoulders. So we are so proud of you for getting up this morning just to be on this, uh, this, this Zoom and we appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Green. Let, let's, let's go to Giles. Yes. Uh, Ship and then uh, Lieutenant Marilyn Barreau. Yes. Uh, thank you. And let me just say this. Um, in spite of the 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 unjustified, in my opinion, killings that we see, in spite of uh, there being bad actors in law enforcement, uh, in spite of the fact that there is uh, people in every profession, for that for that matter, that uh, don't. Uh, subscribe to the oath of their office. All right. Uh, policing is still a noble, no pun intended, uh, profession. All right. Because it gives you an opportunity to help people when they're in difficult situations. It's a helping profession. And the problem that we have is in our selection process, because we need to put more emphasis on people who have empathy for others. We, we tend to concentrate on the people look at people for their scholastic achievements. We look at people for their athletic achievements, but we really need to look at people who have empathy for others. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, emotional intelligence is the best quality that you can have for dealing with people. 80, I would say 83 to 85% of the work that we do is resolving problems. It's probably 15% of the time of our job, we're actually making arrests. So we need to really uh, hone in on those qualities. And that's why what we said earlier, having people from the community as part of the review board, not just law enforcement, because law enforcement looks at things in a very myoptic way. We need people from the community on those panels who selecting people who's gonna come into your community and serve you. Who better to have on that panel? So uh, I wanna encourage all the young people to do like I did, be the change that you wanna see in law enforcement. I grew up during the turbulent times of the 60s. I remember the riots in Newark. I remember the riots in Plainfield. I remember the police corruption, the Knapp Commission report, the Kerner Commission report. They put policing, they put policing on display and showed all of the corruption and misconduct that was going on. And it was bad. And we have uh, moved forward since that time, especially on the corruption side, but we still have a long way to go with regard to police misconduct and excessive okay. force. So, you know, be the change that you want to see. And I encourage you, and you have a lot of people out here, especially uh, uh, like, like Captain Martin, uh, uh, Lieutenant uh, Bequet, uh, you know, you have a lot of law enforcement officers that you can just sit down and talk to, and we will help you and mentor you through the process, like I was mentored through the process. I didn't want to be in law enforcement. The pay okay. wasn't good. The, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, uh, quality of life was challenging, but it's changed dramatically since that time. So I'll leave it at that for now. Okay, Lieutenant Maryland, I know we jacking your last name up. It's, pronounce your last name again. Barrett. I'm Barrett. 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 I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it this time. <laughs> Lieutenant Maryland Barrett, why why should young people trust police officers? And then we gotta we have a bunch of questions coming in. So young people, keep the questions coming in. Lieutenant Maryland, <clears throat> so, um, I'll be brief in regards to 
that question and trust in police. When I became a police officer, um, you know, I, I looked at it in the aspect of, I wanted to be here to help, you know, uh, the people in my community. I'm a mother, um, I have a son. And again, and I can piggyback on one of the other speakers when they said, you know, be the change that you wanna see. And that's just the reality of it. I mean, unfortunately in the climate that we're in now, we have to make that change. Um, and I, I look at it and encourage, you know, our youth if um, things that they don't like that's going on now, we can be, we're the only ones that can make that change with what's going on. Um, trust in the police, you know, is just something that we're here to help you. You know, we're here to guide you. Um, everyone's not bad in different professions. You will, you, you know, you have sour apples and it's unfortunate, but it shouldn't take away from what we do because we're here to protect you. That's the oath that we took. Thank you, thank you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to some questions, but I would like to say to um, to Matt Stevens and the distinguished men of your fraternity, I hope that you guys will consider doing this conversation again, because I think that it is it is so critical. And oftentimes, I don't think that young people have an opportunity to talk to police officers, both both men and women who put their lives on the line daily. So I would encourage you guys to, you know, let's, let's, let's come back to the drawing table and perhaps do this again, because it's such a rich conversation and such an important conversation as I think, um, you know, Captain Martin talked about, you know, he, he's got to come out of that uniform. And when he comes out of that uniform, you know, he's just like the rest of us. And so I think that once again, this is a super important conversation couple questions coming in. So I want to thank the mentors and the young people, you know, keep them coming. We probably have about another 15 minutes. Um, this is an interesting question. And this goes out to uh, the police officers. Do you believe the police academy training in New Jersey is good or does it need to be improved? Do you believe the training that you receive at the police academy is good or does it need to be improved? And that is a great Let me question. Yeah, let me let me let me start with that one because I am currently, I serve as a commissioner for the New Jersey Police Training Commission. I've also been an instructor in a, a police academy. I've been in law enforcement for over thirty five years, uh, working on a municipal and state level, and I've worked and I chaired the national organization throughout this country. So, which took me to various different um, agencies around the state. Actually, I'm getting ready to go to Chicago to review their training process for the Department of Justice. And I went to St. Louis right after Mike Brown. I'm gonna tell you right now firsthand, uh, specifically regarding New Jersey, um, we, we need to change. We need to change in a way of what we do. Um, not to say that there's not good training, uh, but we need to transform police training. So again, that it impacts the community in the right way. We need, that's where you can change the culture of policing. We can come out with all the policies and all the legislation that we want to until we change the culture of policing. We, we're not going to get to where we need to be because culture will eat policy for lunch, breakfast and dinner. And in our police training act, which is a legislation that oversees that that promulgates more or less the policing for the state of New Jersey right now, we have a unique opportunity. And, and, and I'm talking now with the New Jersey Black Legislative Caucus. We need to review that policy that impacts all policing in New Jersey. Right now, it's, it's being, some changes are being made and it's gonna be, it's gonna come before the legislature, but we need to review that policy and make sure that whatever is in that new legislation has the tools in there that we need to bring about the change that we wanna see. So yes, Training is an issue, but don't let people just divert the conversation to training because it's bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. And we have to be as, not only as, as community members, but Omega men, we have to be on the front line when these things are being discussed. And I know I uh, give brother uh, Matt Stevens a lot of credit. We, we're going to take this, don't let this just be a, a conversation. Don't let okay. the killing of George Floyd be a moment. Let's make it a movement and bring about the change that we want to see. Back, 
Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, Giles Ship and, and Lieutenant Marilyn Barreau, but then there's a, a another person sent in a follow-up question. And so we'll go to that. And then um, Jeremiah, one of the young people who always participates in our Clicks Team Town Hall, has he's going to unmute his line and he's going to ask um, his question. And so to, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Ship already answered that question. Captain Larry Martin and Lieutenant Marilyn Barreau, uh, what are your thoughts around the New Jersey Police Academy and um, whether or not it needs to be improved? I think that um, as, as Brother Ship said, um, I think there's some things that we do very well um, as far as training, uh, but you know, the, the open end to that question is, you know, we're here to serve the community. If the community is not happy, then we have to acknowledge that there's some things that we need to do differently. So, you know, uh, there's two answers to that question. If we're teaching how to people how to operate cars, yeah, we're doing that good. Um, if we're teaching people how to write uh, and, and detail reports, what happened at incidents, yeah, we're doing that good. If we're trying to teach uh, our officers how to meet the needs of the community and we're not reaching that goal, if we're not inspiring uh, the young people to want to be police officers because the way they watch Captain Martin serve the community or Lieutenant Barrett serve the community, then we're not reaching that goal. So I think the answer is there are some things we're doing well, but I acknowledge like Brother Ship said, there are some things that we are missing the mark and we need to do uh, you know, a thousand times better at. So um, you know, I, ho I hope that answered the question. Um, okay, Lieutenant Barrett. Again, I'll piggy I can piggyback off of what Captain Martin said. I mean, I believe that our there are changes that can be made. Um, again, we're doing there are some things that are, that need to be worked on um, that could be done differently. But everything it's a process. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just pretty much it. I don't want to really touch too much into that, but you know, it's a process. And, that's and, and if, if if I can take two seconds of of Lieutenant Barrett's time because. She, she was very brief. I think that she does an excellent job and she's underselling herself today. Lieutenant Barrett is our uh, commander of our school resource officers. I think uh, mm. uh, um, uh, Dr. Fitz, you talked about it earlier. She does an excellent job. Those children love Lieutenant Barrett and her staff. Um, so when I say, you know, I, I don't wanna, in light of everything that's going on in society, we're watching people being killed. Uh, we're watching, terrible tactics in, in my opinion in a lot of these situations so those things need to change and i don't want anyone any of our, our mentees to think that i'm ignoring that uh, because those things need to be addressed but going back to why we need you to trust us there are we are out here to serve you and sometimes that is not the message that's coming across to you all so we have officers in the community um, that are out here to serve you um, Officer Seto with the PAL and the and the explorers that Mayor Green talked about. Um, you know, Dr. Fitzhugh uh, devoting his time on a Saturday because he wants his students to understand that this is a career opportunity. Lieutenant Barrett serving those students. I've seen her bring kids in and feed kids when they needed to be fed. You know, um, I've seen her bring kids who were in crisis and crying and ready to fight into her office and able to talk through situations, not charging with crimes and things of that sort. So there are some things that we're doing well, and uh, we're gonna strive to get better, but I do think that our training needs to be better. Thank you, Brother Miller. Thank and, you. And, 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 and just and lastly, if 10 more seconds are left, uh, <laughs> lastly, you know, again, I can't overemphasize the point that be the change you wanna see. That's the reason when I got into the field of law enforcement. And that's the reason why I worked at, I pushed and pushed, and fortunately, got an opportunity to serve at the academy. Cause that's when your, your, your first initial uh, uh, understanding of law enforcement takes place. So don't just become a law enforcement officer just to become a law enforcement officer, become a law enforcement officer with a vision, with a mission, with goals and objectives to bring about the change that you wanna see. And that's one way that I think that I have impacted some other law enforcement officers by being those instruct serving in those instructor capacities in the academy. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, Jeremiah has a question. Jeremiah, unmute your line. And ladies and gentlemen, young people, parents, mentors, we have about ten more minutes, so we want to try to get as many questions as we can. Uh, Jeremiah, you can unmute your line and ask your question. 
Hello, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, I have seen Lieutenant Barrett in my school, you know, the way she interacts with the students is very good. And I really feel like, I feel like my school, you know, my school, it wasn't so bad. I mean, it was bad when I was there freshman year, but I think it got a lot better over the years to come. I do see the SOR officers in there and they do have a friendly conversation with the students. They, the way they interact with the students, they let the students know that they are there for them. So I think that is a good initiative um, with the police department. I was just wondering, like, uh, does, does the city police, does, it, does the police of uh, East Orange, do they have any community engagement programs where they allow the public to meet and greet the police officers? So where they bridge that gap of the mistrust and give the, give the uh, public an opportunity to speak to them. So if one of you can, if one of you can uh, respond in one minute or less. Absolutely, Jeremiah, thank you for the question. Um, the the uh, Chief Bendy and, and, and Mayor Green, they have uh, personnel strictly assigned. That's, that's all they do is community relations. So, you know, you caught me a little off guard, but I know we've hosted, uh, you know, uh, 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 coffee with a with an officer, coffee with the cop. I know um, even your SROs. That is community outreach. We have the police explorers. We have the uh, police athletic league. So it may not be always, um, but we, where we have officers volunteer time. I know you know before I had my kids and had to devote more time to my family. I used to coach. Uh, 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 that was volunteer um, uh, basketball. I coached football for over eight years with the PAL. So these are all outreach programs where, you know, I still have kids coming back to me. Like, matter of fact, I have three, two kids that I used to coach are three are firemen and two are police officers in East Orange. I don't want to give, give up my age, but there are, um, you know, some outreach programs going on. And I don't know if we always look at them like that, but, um, you know, it, 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 you know, we can always talk about more programs, but we definitely have um, a community outreach going on, particularly um, in the East Orange Police Department. I hope that answered the question, Jeremy. Yeah, and, and, and that was that was a great question, Jeremiah. And uh, quite frankly, it should be a requirement for police departments to have regular meetings with the communities that they serve. Every sector, when I was a police director in Plainfield, I had a captain over every ward, and it was required upon them to go out and meet with the community and to talk with them about the concerns they have and bring it back to my attention. Matter of fact, I told them, I better hear about it from you before I hear about it from the community. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks a lot. Re really quickly, got two more questions we wanna try to address, but uh, Jeremiah, that was, a, that was a great question around um, outreach and activities, um, because I think the best kept secret in America a lot of times is our, our men and women who are police officers do far much more great work than is reported. We just don't hear about the relationships being built with SROs and schools. Uh, we don't hear about the relationships that police officers have with the community. And so just really, really quickly, because we have about six minutes left and we wanna be good stewards of time. One of the questions um, was someone wanted to know from, from, a, from a deeply personal standpoint, why did you guys individually, why did you make the decision to become a police officer? So 30, Mr. Ship, 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I, I think I kind of addressed that because I wanted to change, I wanted to be a part of the change that I wanted to see. Quite frankly, you can do much more to change the, uh, uh, to, to change a, a, a problem from the inside than you can from the outside. So if you really wanna be, you want to see a difference made in policing, join a law enforcement agency, and quite frankly, just be the change that you want to see. Be the change you want to see. L Lieutenant Marilyn Barrett, see, I got your name right. It took me a while. <laughs> um, the reason why, I mean, I chose to become a police officer. I was young, and I felt it was an honorable um, profession to be in um, when, you know, to protect and serve my community. I was just, you know, at that time, again, I, I was young. I was in high school. I, I used to see the police officers there and it was just like an honorable job to have. Like I wanted to help. I wanted to help the people in my community. And that was just as simple as that. Thank you, thank you. Captain Martin. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be flat out honest with you guys. We are from the same community. You know, those answers sounded great, but I was in my senior year of college. Uh, there, was no <laughs> more, there, there, was, there was no more football for me and the economy was bad in that year and I couldn't find a job. 
And thank God my father had made me take the police exam and um, I, I did well enough to pass. And I said, you know, it's not a bad salary. So I took the job and I had other plans, but when I started to do the job and I, and I was from the community, I began to realize what an important job it was. And to go back to what Giles, brother Ship is saying, I realized the opportunity that I had to make an impact on the community. So I began to become invested in being a police officer. But to be honest with you, I, it all started because I couldn't find a job. Mm, th thank you for being fully transparent <laughs> and fully, fully honest. So I want to go to Mayor, Mayor Green and Dr. Fitz, you really quickly, because we had about four minutes left. <laughs> I want to try to wrap this up in two minutes and then turn it back over to Matt Stevens. Uh, Mayor Green and uh, Dr. Fitzhugh, uh, we, have, we have a host of young people um, here on a Saturday morning listening. Can you, can, you give, can you just give some very, very brief words of encouragement to the scholars that we have um, participating in this event today? Just some, just some brief words of encouragement because we know it's tough out here. Just some brief words of encouragement. Mayor Green. Yes, um, to our young people, you know, you heard a lot uh, today. We want you to continue to keep your purpose, have a purpose, you know, uh, a purpose in life and a purpose to do things, have that drive, um, stay committed. Don't let anyone um, steal your thunder. It's something that you want to do. If that's your goal to be a police officer, um, then you strive to do it. Learn all you can about being a police officer. Don't be afraid, as we said earlier, to um, get one of the police officers to mentor you, uh, to guide you. Again, as we, we said earlier, there's a lot of things that you have seen lately, but again, we got great officers. We got great police men and women. Uh, we just need more like yourself to be a part of such a great fraternity. Um, and, and we can't judge everybody to be the bad person, right? From brown and black. But again, there's some, there's some good white police officers too. You know, I have to be fair. All of them are not bad. They got to get to know the community. Um, again, be the change maker. We got you. We encourage you. We love y'all guys. Today is a good um, platform for you to hear from so many individuals and so many perspectives of their careers. Uh, and we know you can do it. And we're going to continue to be here for you. Just, again, you have a purpose. You have a goal. Do it. Don't let nobody influence you to do anything different. You can go ahead and do it. And we're here with you. Thanks, thanks, Mayor Mayor Green. Before we go to Superintendent Dr. Dr. Fitzhugh, can someone put the website in the chat for young people, for parents, for mentors who want to um, look at the qualifications and what's needed to be a distinguished officer um, in East Orange? I mean, I think that'd be helpful if somebody could drop that link into uh, the chat. And we still have questions coming in. I'm sorry, we won't be able to get any more questions because we want to go to Dr. Fitzhugh. But again, I definitely think we need a part two. So Dr. Fitzhugh, any words of encouragement? Um, any, any parting wisdom? Because uh, we know that the young people are really struggling thinking about the kind of society that they're living in. Any, any words of encouragement? I always say that it's important that you, that our students our young folks, they have a mentor that they can go to and, and ask those critical questions. And as adults, we have to take time for the students and for the young people. No matter how busy you are, we have to make sure that holistically, we make time to have those critical conversations. Too many things are happening in the community, the society in the whole, and we need to give young folks the correct information so they can reflect on practice and know how to move correctly as they go from point A to point B. I say this, the work that I do every day, I take pride in being the superintendent of schools in Orange Township. I don't sit in 451 Lincoln Avenue. Our students are back. So I spend the majority of my day in the buildings because they need to see that their superintendent cares for them, but more importantly, that the superintendent loves them and wants them to be successful. So long of the short of it, mentoring and also making sure that we are a part of the growth of our students because we want them to reinvest in the community in which they live. 
And, and so once again, you know, ladies and gentlemen, and to the dynamic uh, scholars that are participating, I wanted to say personally, you guys have made my day. I mean, literally this, this is such a powerful conversation because there are multiple, when we think about solutions, there's just so many solutions, but one is we need to make sure that we increase the number of black and brown officers who were born and raised who grown up in these communities like so many of you um, yourselves. If I had the money, uh, Mayor Green, can we give them a raise? Can, can we get that on the, uh, on the agenda? To give them a to give them a raise. Listen, we we gave our police officers one of the biggest raises in the history of East Orange, and it came from the 14th mayor. That's called Ted Green. So they okay. good. Man, you we, said we they, appreciate you, you said man. They good. They good. Oh, okay. And they well uh, deserve it. Well, let's turn it over to. Literally, you guys have made my day because I think that this is an important conversation and a solution, a step in the right direction. Uh, let's turn it back over to Matt Stevens. Great, man. We could not have had a better start for Saturday. Uh, we will be working uh, with uh, Superintendent uh, Fitzhugh uh, to try to do something like this again uh, in the school district with Mayor Green. And we'd also like to connect with um, uh, Brother Abdul over there in East Orange uh, Public Schools to do uh, something similar. Um, I wanted to, um, as we close, uh, we have a number of great uh, things that are going on for young people. Uh, and I wanted to kind of share, um, we have a uh, coding class, uh, which is teaching young people how to become gamers. Uh, that program starts on May the 1st. We have 15 slots available. The course is $50, but we have five scholarships available. So if there's anyone who would like to be a part of the How to Become a Gamer program, I'm going to be putting the um, link in the chat. Please uh, click on. Uh, it's a first come, first serve, uh, but uh, this course will be an eight-week course, which will teach you how to develop your website, how to improve in playing the games, and then how to attract customers uh, to your website. Yes, I did say customers, uh, because what will happen is the more people that come to your website, the more people will want to advertise on your website, and therefore you can start your own gaming business based upon the mentoring activity that we're going to be sharing with you. I want to thank all of my um, distinguished guests uh, for coming out today, uh, and uh, specifically uh, the young people uh, and their parents. I see uh, we have a number of parents. I wanna thank uh, Brother Lane for coming out with his two sons and all the other parents that, that are here today. As I put the uh, link in the chat, I'll just close by allowing um, Brother Devone to give uh, closing uh, remarks. And then I would ask all of the brothers uh, from the fraternity to just stay on for a minute for us to have a, a wrap up. So Brother Devon. Right, um, thank you once again on behalf of Ada Pi Chapter for joining us. Thank you to all of our distinguished um, panelists for your insight, your participation, your words of encouragement. We hope the youth um, on today's um, call have got some information that, it, that they can utilize, not in the, in the future, but tomorrow, right? Uh, we want you guys to um, feel free to ask questions. Um, to your, your teachers, to your parents, to your building administrators, to police officers, when it comes to um, questions about your career. If you have um, Brother Matt Stevens as the chair of the Ada Pi Mentoring Program, feel free to reach out to him regarding questions um, as, as follow-up to this program. But we look forward to seeing you um, in the near future. As he said, we have a program coming up in a couple of weeks, but um, we look to provide youth programming in this virtual space um, every two weeks. Hopefully when things clear up, we'll get a chance to um, host um, a lot of our programs out of the Omega Family Resource and Learning Center, which is located at 132 South Harrison Street in East Orange. So we are looking forward to in-person interaction, but we're not there yet, but we're looking forward to it. So um, thank you once again, and everyone enjoy this uh, wonderful spring day. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everybody.
Be safe. All right. Brother, stay on the line, please. Outstanding. Thanks, David. Yeah. Make sure you uh, turn off the um, the uh, recording, Brother Barry, and take us off of Facebook. Yeah.